In this video, we would like to present you the benefits of the use of topology optimization in additive manufacturing. But before we start, allow us to introduce ourselves. We are David, Mandana, Amrosia and Juliana, a group of PhD students from different European institutions. We are working together with the goal to improve the metal additive manufacturing process. The name of the project we are working on is PAN squared. It is funded by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 program. PAN squared has close collaborations with industry and academia to address the quality assurance in various stages of AM. If you are not familiar with the additive manufacturing process, don't worry, we will give you a little introduction. Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is a process used to create objects by depositing material layer by layer. The laser melting process is one kind of additive manufacturing process among many existing. In this process, a laser source melts a thin layer of the powdered material that solidifies to achieve the desired form. Let's see step by step. It all starts with a 3D geometric model on a computer, which is sliced in layers. The building process is based on how you slice your model. Now on the additive manufacturing machine, the powder is uniformly distributed in what we call a powder bed. Then the laser scans the first layer, solidifying the material into a cross-section of the model. The powder bed is lowered and a new layer of material is applied. Again, the laser scans the layer according to the cross-section of the current layer. The process repeats itself until the part is complete. Afterwards, it is necessary to remove the powder that was not melted from the surroundings of the part. For that, a number of post-processes are available, but this is a topic for a future video. If you want to see how it looks in real life, here's a short clip. Metal additive manufacturing is truly revolutionizing the industry these days. Although the early adopters of metal additive manufacturing were aerospace and motorsports, the increasing application of technology made it beneficial for architecture, dental restoration, medical implants and even fashion products. Now the question comes if there is any similarity between the LEGO block and additive manufacturing. The answer is yes. LEGO was an early idea of expressing ideas in a physical form, while additive manufacturing operates in the same manner. On to topology optimization. Topology optimization finds the best distribution of material based on complex goals and constraints. It works by taking an arbitrarily shaped material and minimizing or maximizing the stress and stiffness. The resulting designs often look like biological structures such as honeycomb, bones and fractal shapes featuring curved surfaces, bends and twists. These shapes can actually be reproduced by additive manufacturing methods. Now we only need one more piece of information which will allow us to understand why a Lego brick is among the possible applications. We will take a look at the process used to produce Lego elements called injection molding. It starts with a little piece of plastic poured in the machine and melted by the rotation of a big screw. Following the red arrows, the melted plastic is injected into a mold with a cavity with the shape of the element. It's the same principle as when you pour liquid dough into a cake mold. Metal additive manufacturing can be a great tool to build the molds. In this case the mold looks like a metal block with an internal cavity that will be filled with the plastic. It me this means that during the process the mold has to withstand many loads to not collapse like the pressure from the liquid plastic while it is being injected and also that it's subjected to many constraints to make sure that it doesn't move. But let's examine the loads and the constraints that we are considering a bit more in depth. Here is an idealized model which is divided in many regions to handle topology optimization later more easily. In the center there are four arrows pointing outwards in four directions which denote the effect of the plastic injection. On the sides there are four other arrows that represents the loads applied to the mold to make sure that it doesn't move during the process. The triangles at the corners are the constraints which are the fixing points of the mold. Of course this is a simplified view but our aim is to show how powerful the tool of topology optimization can be. The program itself tries to make the structure as rigid as possible. At each step it checks if increasing the stiffness of one cell increases the overall stiffness of the whole part. If this is the case, the change is applied. If not, the stiffness in the cell is decreased and the cell becomes more white. After this procedure, 
a new overall stiffness is calculated. And this process keeps repeating itself until the overall stiffness doesn't change anymore. We have applied this logic both in 2D and 3D. The result is an organic looking component. There are some rules we can derive from this. There are two main features. There are pillars connecting the point where the loads press inward and there are contact points where the liquid plastic pushes out. This video has tried to show you how we can create complex parts using simple rules derived from real life problems. If you like this video and think someone might be interested, why not share it with them or visit the website. But above all, thanks for watching.